Hey, what's going on guys? I uh, thought I'd do a quick little update on the progress I've made. I haven't done any major projects since the rear end. It's all just been little tiny stuff here and there. You know, all the little odds and ends that need to be done before the car can actually make it down the road. So I thought I'd fill you in on that, give you a quick little walk around the car to see where we're at, and then uh, I'll get back to work. But um, so basically uh, in the last video, I was in the middle of working on the rear end. Uh, I was waiting on parts that were supposed to come in uh, so I could finish the torque box install. And they still haven't come in. As soon as I saw that it was shipped via China Post, I knew it was coming from China, obviously. And uh, I didn't feel like waiting. So I took the right-hand bracket, the passenger side bracket that I had two of them for, uh, basically cut it and re-welded it uh, so that it would essentially be the mirror image uh, of what it form formerly was. So by doing that, I was actually able to do or use it uh, on the driver's side. So now the torque box uh, kit is 100% installed or battle box kit, whatever you want to call it. And that's going to look like, there you go, you can see it. I still have to weld it and I got to bend the top down, but uh, it's installed 100% as well as uh, the, uh, the upper one on that side. So we're good to go there. Uh, I still have to put the passenger seat in. Um, a buddy of mine has some metal for me laying around that he's going to give me so I don't have to order anything or go to the store and pick it up. So that'll save me probably 30, 40 bucks worth of metal um, and as well as the nuts and bolts and stuff like that. So that'll be a big help. And I know he wants to go for a, a test ride with me, so he can't do it if he doesn't have a place to sit. But there's the extra seat. Um, I, I know in my, my last video I went over the... Uh, the intercooler setup, but that's now 100% done. It's all plumbed, looking real nice. It's full of water, it's holding water, no issue. The only problem I did have is that by uh, just forcing that hard plastic slash rubber hose over some Dash 10 uh, fittings, is that because the fittings were threaded uh, and the hose is smooth on the inside, it uh, it was leaking. So I basically just, oh, excuse me, damn energy drink. Um, I wrapped the threads with a little bit of black uh, silicone and then put the hose back on. That was the end of my leaks uh, for the water tank. And it's been holding, it's got five gallons in the tank. It's full all except for like the last inch on the top. So it's holding no problem. Um, the pump runs, no issues. Everything's good to go there. Uh, I changed up the setup on the drag wing just a little bit, nothing major, but I went and put in these pins uh, the when this was originally put in these were bolts with a nut on the end and the problem with doing that is that I got to carry around two wrenches and have to undo all four of these every single time I want to um, you know open the trunk and I'm like that's or the hatch I'm like that's a pain in the butt I don't want to uh, to deal with that so I went to Home Depot and I got these little pins and they came out of a little crap you know in the in the hardware section of little drawers so I got these and then I put and I grabbed this pin. So it's a matter of just pull this pin out and slide the, the main pin over and that's it. You know, I want to say I spent like five, six bucks and all of them are good to go. So that looks real good. Uh, I've got all the Zeus fittings pop riveted down. I still have to do a little body work. As you can see, it's slightly uh, inward. Uh, the, the support that's behind here, I had to cut out to make it fit. I'll put it back in. Uh, it was just too long before. Now it's good. Um, let's see, it looks like my brakes are dripping a little bit. Uh, I did bleed the brakes yesterday. That's what I call a preliminary bleed, where the whole thing takes maybe 10 minutes to do all four. Um, there's still clearly air in the lines. I knew I was going to do it again, so that's why it was just a real quick rush job just to get as much air out as possible, and I got tons of air out. So it's actually, I could drive it down the road uh, as it sits now, but knowing there's air still in the lines, why bother? So I'll bleed them again tomorrow, or actually tomorrow's Thursday. I'll do them on Friday when I have a buddy coming over to help me, um, and then that should be good. Uh, the suspension is 100% back in. Car is sitting under its own weight, or it's sitting on the suspension. It's not sitting on jack stands. Well, actually, it might still be on the jack stands a little bit, but it doesn't have to be. I, uh, I've made this one and a half inch drop bracket. It's bolted and welded, so it'll have no problem supporting the weight. My buddy had said, you know, when I showed him those pictures, he's like, you know, they make adjustable 
uh, coilover mounts, don't you? And I'm like, yeah, they cost 150 bucks. And this cost me pretty much nothing. It was just stuff I had laying around. I would much rather pay nothing than $150. So I made those. I purposely made them longer than I needed them. So I dropped the whole car uh, an inch and a half. By doing that, the tire was then too far up into the wheel well. Um, you could roll the tire, but if I hit even the slightest little bump, uh, it would it would hit the, the body up here. So, um, I mean, I designed it that way. I wanted it to be too low so I could crank the coilovers back up. So I, lay, I lifted it back up a half an inch by adjusting the coilovers. And then I trimmed all along here, and there's still plenty more to trim. My last car, uh, I rolled it. On this one, I just cut it. It was much easier just to cut it. I don't have a rolling tool. I mean, I need to clean it up a little bit. It's not, it's not beautiful. This was the first side, too. The other side looks so much better. So I actually took a marker and marked out where to cut rather than just doing it by, by freehanding it. Um, the anti-roll bar is completely hooked up. Now it's a little dark in there. Those bolts uh, actually need to be tightened, but other than that, that's in. Everything's good to go. Suspension's done as far as I'm concerned. Uh, everything's torqued down, looking good, welded up, etc., etc. I still need to do the door hinges because they sag, so you gotta really work to get the door open, and then you gotta slam it to shut it. Headlights are in. They came in, I was a little, wasn't sure, I wanted. I knew I wanted some dark headlights. It was between smoked and, uh, and just going completely black. I'm glad I went with the smoked headlights rather than just blacking them out. I think this looks sort of stockish, but also clearly aftermarket, as opposed to just blacking it out. That would look cheap. Um, here's a good shot of the brakes with the wheels off. There are the, uh, the aerospace brakes. See, the garage is still an absolute mess. There's still powder all over from cutting up the uh, fiberglass. This side actually lines up real well, so I'm not really gonna do anything over here. I just have to put the supports uh, behind it real quick, weld them back in. Uh, that's one of them right there. Nothing special, it just holds so that if you push on this, it, it, can't, it just holds it so it can't move. That's all it is, nothing special. Got the hood all lined back up. All that powder and flaky crap on it is from cutting up uh, the fiberglass. Um, Another Home Depot special. Can't remember if I talked about these, but rather than hood pins, I have these linch pins. Well, there we go. That's how that goes. So nice and easy. And this side has no wiring as far as the headlights are concerned. Uh, but let's see. Oh yeah, I did get that gauge hooked up and wires, my fuel pressure gauge. It looks beat up because it is. It survived the accident, it doesn't leak, and it reads accurately, so I'm leaving it. There's the cheapest LED light I could buy. I got a pair of them for $10. So all they have to do is put out as much light as a stock halogen bulb, and I'll be happy. And the other thing, the reason the car really isn't on the ground yet, because the transmission cooler uh, was destroyed in the accident apparently and I didn't realize it. Um, I thought it survived. It did not. I started the car yesterday to start uh, getting fluid going through the transmission and uh, in the process of doing that uh, it just started puking transmission fluid out. You can see it all on the ground. It's all over the place. I hate dealing with transmission fluid. It stinks. feels gross on your hands. I hate transmission fluid. But I was able to find a new cooler, the exact same one, for $34. So it's on order. It'll be here next week. So the plan is that uh, by next week, the car will be back on the ground. It should look pretty good. New ride height. Uh, I'm a little worried about the front because I was having some clearance issues with the, uh, the fender right here. I trimmed that as well. Hopefully we're going to be good. Um, my phone's about to stop recording this video because it's getting long. So I'm going to cut it off right here. Hope you guys enjoy the update. And I'm hoping the next video I have for you guys will be the car driving around. So get out there in your garages, have fun, and I'll see you guys next week.